Oh, poetry. Nope. I have not suddenly fallen in love with poetry. I think you know how I feel about poems in general. They're generally not my thing. They confuse me too much. However, I will say this one here, this style, I think I approve of this one, and I think I'm okay with this one. So we're going to talk about a special style called ode poetry or ode poems. And this is basically what we're talking about. Really, if you can remember what's in red, you're going to be doing yourself the best favor ever. Ode poems are when we turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. It's a poem that is praising something, okay? And what we're talking about praising is usually something very, very simple and something that people might overlook in life. For example, you might decide one day while looking down at your feet and walking that a sidewalk is a pretty amazing thing, that sidewalks have done a lot for you in your life. So you might sit down and write an ode poem to the sidewalk, how much you love a sidewalk. For me, I, there's a very good chance someday I'm going to write a poem about this here jacket. I've had this hoodie forever. Mrs. Lagana doesn't like it at all, but that's life for you. I've had it forever. I feel extremely comfortable in it. I could see myself sitting down and writing all the great praise I have for this jacket that I've worn. All right. What else does it do? What's, what can we expect in ode poetry? Well, as I mentioned, it's about a regular object or experience. You're not going for something amazing, like writing about the entire galaxy out there. That's impressive. We get that. You're going for ordinary, simple. You want to praise the topic, as I mentioned, and the tone of your poem might be lyrical or light or even playful. And I think you'll see that in a lot of the poems I'm going to share. You almost always want to speak directly to the object or subject. So if you're writing about that sidewalk, you talk to the sidewalk like it's an actual person. It relies on repetition. It relies on repetition. See what I did there? Take advantage, and it takes advantage of any verbs or adjectives related to the topic, okay? You're trying to liven up the writing. Yeah, usually you see a lot of personification that happens in that because you are talking to the inanimate object most often as if it's a person, so it's going to behave back like it's a person. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at an example here. So I have one here about recess, and I think that's pretty timely since, regrettably, we don't have a lot of common recess time together these days. Recess, oh, recess. Recess, oh, recess, we love you. You rule. You keep us away from the teachers in school. Your swings are refreshing. Your slides are the best. You give us a break from a really hard test. Recess, oh, recess, we want you to know. You're sweeter than syrup. You're special like snow. You don't assign homework. You make the day fun. You let us play kickball and run in the sun. Recess, oh recess, you're the first one on our list. We'd be in despair if you didn't exist. We're happy we have you. You're awesome and cool. Recess, oh recess, we love you. You rule. Okay, who doesn't love recess? I mean, seriously, that was a slam dunk of a subject to pick. But you grasp the idea now of what we're talking about with an ode. It is a song, a celebration, great praise for something that seems so simple, a break from your studies. Let's zip in and look at another one. I may not read this one here. Let's see. This one is an ode to pizza. No, I'm not going to read it, and I'm going to tell you why. The internet is filled with odes to pizza. People like pizza. Say that 20 times fast. People really love their pizza, and I, there are a ton of these poems out there. This one is very good. It's well done. And if you want to read it for yourself, you can always pause and then enlarge it and go through it. Let's take a look at something else. I have one here on homework, another school-related topic. And you notice we talked about it. It talks to the subject. They're very excited, high praise for it usually, right? And then there's a lot of exclamation marks. There's repetition. There's good verb choice, good adjective choice. But this one... This is a little different, and I'm going to go back to something I've mentioned before, and that is sometimes when we're looking at poetry enough, you're going to find that you see the same poet show up again and again. Jack Pretluski is somebody I've read his material before. He's often very funny, and his ode is actually against homework as opposed to praising it, which is why I'm going to read it because it is a little bit different than what I've told you you can expect in most ode poetry. Homework, oh homework. Homework, oh homework, I hate you, you stink. 
I wish I could wash you away in the sink. If only a bomb would explode you to bits. Homework, oh homework, you're giving me fits. I'd rather take baths, well, with a man-eating shark, or wrestle a lion alone in the dark. Eat spinach and liver, pet ten porcupines, that then tackle the homework my teacher assigns. Homework, oh homework, you're the last on my list. I simply, you should say simply, can't see why you even exist. If you just disappeared, it would tickle me pink. Homework or homework, I hate you, you stink. So we got the idea there, right? Again, I can't tell you 100% they're all going to be positive. This one is against homework, but it's done in a light way, so it does fit the pattern of an old poem. This one here is going to shift things completely. Rather than being funny, this one is actually more respectful. And it is about someone and how much they have love and praise for their shoes. Ode to my shoes. My shoes rest all night under my bed. Tired they stretch and loosen their laces. Wide open they fall asleep and dream of walking. They revisit the places they went to during the day and wake up cheerful, relaxed, so soft. Okay. This one kind of broke some of the pattern we talked about. I mentioned repetition being used and this sort of big excitement for the topic. You hear everybody beginning their poems, oh, whatever. Uh, this one doesn't follow that, but it qualifies as an ode because it is talking at length and praising a certain subject, this man's shoes. He respects what they've done for him and how every day after some rest, they're ready to go again on a walk. Okay. We have one here, another one that's kind of serious, and it's an ode to a butterfly. I'm not going to read it, but I'll zoom in quickly if you want to pause and read through it yourself. You can do that at some point. Instead, we're going to move on to how do you write an ode? I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this, but I am going to hit on some of the points we've seen show up by looking at some of the ode poems. You pick an ordinary place or thing. You give your subject praise or thanks. In parentheses, we have here O, comma, and then whatever it is you want to celebrate or praise. Speak directly to the object. That's important. Use adjectives to describe it. Use verbs to bring that object to life. As I mentioned, personification is often what happens in these poems. Something not alive is allowed to act as if it's living like a person. And we want to use repeated lines because it helps to create an effect. Usually, you're going to end up doing a lot of rhyming, too. All right, so let's take a look at this one here. It is an ode to gum. I took a shot at it. I'm going to try to take my own advice. I wrote an ode, and I'll be very frank. I didn't spend a lot of time on this, maybe about half an hour. Um, so it's going to be a little gunky, but I think it kind of works. An ode to gum. Oh, gum, I love you in parts and in some. You keep me awake when testing so I don't perform dumb. Oh, gum, I love your pop and snap, even if occasionally you slip and fall into my lap. Oh, yummy, gummy, your flavors rock my tummy. Cherry, soda, bacon, lime. I don't know if the last is true, but I needed a rhyme. Oh, gum, you can be thick or thin, especially when popping over my chin. You can be tough or weak when pulled and stretched into a cat's cradle. I know, that last one, it be far stretched. Oh, gum, gum, gum. Thank you, thank you for all you have done. So you see, this is why I like it, because even a complete hack like me can come up with something that sounds halfway decent, and it is about gum. I appreciate gum quite a bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chew some gum right now and let you guys go off and do the same. 